Thanks, come on up, guys. Come on over for you. Jordan. Um, so we have time for a Q and A. Uh, if you have questions, raise your hand, uh, and, and we'll get our directors to answer as many of them as possible. In general. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, in film. In film, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Never know. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, let's let's start there. Uh, do you want to start on in? Who can tell us uh, who your um, cinematic inspirations are? Is this working? Right? Uh, it is. Uh, Ninja from The Ant Word and uh, Uruk Sayo. Um, I really like Andre Arnold's work and Lynn Ramsey's work and more recently Clio Barnard's work. They're all women from uh, Britain who kind of make British realist dramas. Yeah. Um, I don't really have any directors that uh, specifically influence my own work, but I just love the work of uh, Hitchcock and Kubrick and um, uh, Orson Welles and recently the PTA and, uh, and David Fincher. So. Uh, I think uh, this example would be I. Last year I went to San Francisco to see Napoleon by Abel Gantz and uh, that really helped convince me to make this film because it was just almost stupid in its ambition. It was just the most ridiculous six hour epic of throwing everything at the wall I've ever seen and it made me go, man, that's cool. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, li I like the whole bunch of directors, Sebastian, hi. Uh, uh, but, you know, I, I don't know, I, mean, I, I like old Spike Lee. Like old Spike Lee, but I like uh, <laughs> Cap too. Um, I'm also a very big fan of Andrea Arnold. I think that she's an amazing female director, and um, most recently mm -hmm. Lena Dunham. I think has done a fabulous job for for young female directors out there. It's an impressive list. You guys watch a lot of movies. <laughs> <laughs> Another question. Yeah, go ahead. This is for the director of, I think it was Sarah Dicia by the two brothers. Um, <laughs> I'm just curious what the inspiration for that film was. I mean, there's a lot of mocking around religion these days, so I, I don't, for some people it might be obviously mocking religion and faith, or... Well, it came, I... I'll, I'll repeat it just for those that didn't hear. So the question, questions for... Uh, Devin and Paradiso, and uh, what your approach was to tackling religion uh, and, and the story, uh, what you're trying to approach with it. Well, ironically, uh, the idea came while I was shooting a documentary in a monastery, Westminster Abbey in Vancouver. <laughs> uh, I ended up living with monks for three days, and um, I, I was never religious growing up, but it really uh, moved me how seemingly content they were and happy, and how uh, actually you know, honest with themselves, they were about their life. And, uh, but on the other hand, it got, me, it got me thinking, if God existed, I'd be really screwed. <laughs> and, uh, and this is, it's sort of an, exp I think this film ended up being kind of a, I brought it in, in about a weekend, uh, before, uh, it got, you know, fixed by several parties. And, uh, it ended up, being, I think, being this kind of expression of my own idea of the universe as this, uh, indifferent, uh, beast where you're either, uh, you know, in, in an atheistic universe, you're subject to, you know, this indifferent, cold uh, vastness of nothingness, and in a theistic universe, uh, I thought the only logical, uh, uh, you know, outcome of that was sheer autocracy. So it's sort of a, I guess it's a work of existentialist dread. <laughs> Sure, the question's for Jasmine, director of Firecrackers, and uh, how you found your cast uh, in order to get such authentic, realist performances from them. Well, some of them are here today. Um, a lot of it, we just went on a casting website, mandy.com, and we had people come in, quite a few girls come in, and read for both parts, and then we basically just chose who is the best for whatever character. Um, we did a lot of improv, and I wrote a lot of backstory for each of the girls, each of the characters. Um, so when they approached each scene, they knew going in, especially with the scene between the mom and, and the lead character, we had many improvs leading up to that scene. So 
Um, and then also the actors are just really willing to give, and um, we just picked in the cast, and I think we picked the right people. I have a question in the back. There we go. For each of the what was uh, the biggest challenge making Sure, uh, if, if you can single it to one. <laughs> well, what, what big challenge did you guys have to overcome in making your work? I can't say too much because Nigel told me not to, but um, <laughs> we t don't tell anyone, but we weren't really allowed to shoot where we were shooting <laughs> because of some reasons. And so we had to get a lot of duvetine and block rooms off and follow certain people that might, if they saw us, kick us out. So the challenge was locking down the location so that we could shoot the movie that I wanted without getting sued. I think our biggest challenge was just going to each location. We had a lot of, we had four different Ontario locations and they were all over the place in Ontario. So taking all the crew there and the cost of that was the biggest challenge. Um. Yeah, I think for us it was, uh, I think Neil can attest to this, shooting long scenes outside um, in Vancouver where the weather's changing like three or four times in an hour. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's just it's just a nightmare when you don't have like giant 16K lights to, to fix, um, to, you know, fix continuity. So just trying to plan every shot intricately so that uh, we didn't lose light here and then so it was a little difficult that way. 16 goddamn locations. <laughs> uh, see, ours was the weather. And I'm from Nova Scotia, so we're used to weather. Like, we, you know, it rains one day, it's sunny the next day, and then in the middle of the sun, it's like, gotcha, and it starts raining again. <laughs> but during our shoot, it was, we had snow, rain, sleet, hail, probably like a tornado, hurricane. It, 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 it kind of all happened within the same day. So we would, it, it was bizarre. So it was within like five seconds in the continuity of this where so that was tough to, to work around. Oh, well, we did, it, I guess. I'll never complain again or brag about being like, I was a from Nova Scotia. You guys should be complaining about the wet. Um, I think our biggest challenge making this film was in the editing process um, because we actually just went out and, and just shot for like 17 hours. So we had an insane amount of footage and it was about trying to find a story within all that. So it was a true layover film. You just like landed, shot, brought it all back. Yeah, well I wasn't actually on a layover, but yeah, pretty much. Could have been. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So um, yeah, the question uh, is for Jordan and your work with Noah and and how you guys because you took on many roles, but he plays a, a, a you know an important part and it feels very natural, almost improvised relationship between the two of you. Mm -hmm. um, how much direction did you give him, and how much was he inputting into how the story developed? Um, yeah. So basically, I had outlined what we wanted it to be, and then Noah and I improvised all of it. So he was actually a huge proponent in the writing. Um, probably more so than I was. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, in terms of directing, I really didn't have to give him much direction. He's a very, very talented actor. And um, yeah, I think we just worked off of each other. And, and so I was very fortunate to have someone like that to work with. Oh, thank you. That's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Even in and out burger? <laughs> <laughs> awesome, thank you. Any you other questions? Yeah, go ahead. For all of you, okay, what's the next project or are you exhausted? I'll answer the first part. Yes, they're exhausted. Um, <laughs> or not. But uh, yeah, if, if you guys are working on something uh, that you'd like to share with their audience uh, and how they can follow you. Yeah. Um, so uh, I'm working on a TV show right now in Montreal. Um, it's a new show called um, Helix for sci-fi. So I'm working on that right now, and I'm also prepping another short film 
that I'll be shooting with my cinematographer and producer, Max Hoplin, and we're hoping to shoot that in November in Toronto. Uh, well, I, I'm wrapping up, a, actually finishing editing a short, but actually post of another short, and uh, I direct Trailer Park Boys, so Ooh. I'll be doing that again uh, this summer. We're back, we, we did come back, so I, I took over, actually, directing, so. And uh, about to do a children's show, uh, and yeah, I know <laughs> it was like that before, though. It was like a children's show trailer. I, I did not know that about you until I now have a two and a half year old daughter who, if if you read her bedtime stories, she would be through the roof. I don't know if people know you're the voice of, of the narrator of Poco. Yeah, a little Poco show. It's a full it's a, like today. It's a, it's a beautiful show. <laughs> uh, anyways. <laughs> I'll put you to sleep. Um, <laughs> and, and then, uh, and then uh, Lauren and I are working on a, another feature right now, which is an adaptation of no, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, with color. <laughs> I guess the the first up project is I'm going to be shooting this dude's grad film, Wills, uh, and it's a black and white film. T uh, shown entirely in little vignettes that punch holes through a black screen about a woman who suffers memory loss. And uh, then hopefully we're going to be going to Europe to do a documentary about a pilgrimage. So uh, that should be fun. Well, um, I work in the soulless world of marketing, so that's kind of just doing commercials and things like that. Um, but um, as far as a labor of love, uh, my uh, friends and I are kind of getting together to work on a feature here in the next uh, year or so. Um, me and my producing partner work pretty closely creatively together and we are developing another short film that we'd like to shoot hopefully um, at the end of spring or early summer next year. Um, I'm, wor I'm working on the sequel. <coughs> <laughs> Just kidding, no, I'm working, <laughs> <laughs> I'm working on a, a documentary about mirrors and introspection. Which could be a sequel. <laughs> We're time for a couple more questions. Missing it on that side. That group, oh, there we go, on the corner here. Go ahead. Uh, 